In this video, I'm going to show you how to route Stephen Slate drums using the contact player um, out into multiple tracks in uh, Reaper. I'll play this beat that I made here for you so you can see that everything is routed out into separate channels and uh, then I'll show you how to go ahead and do everything. So Reaper will build out your multi-outs automatically by opening up your effects window, right-clicking, and then choosing the build multi-routing outs. But the problem is that contact by default does not route out of them. Um, I'm not even sure how the guys over at Steven Slate uh, got these to automatically build these outs, which is awesome. Um, at least puts them in there for you, but I guess there's no way to save inside of contact the correct outputs that you want it to go to. So now I've got them all set up, so they're you know they're right, but um, <clears throat> I'm not sure how to t save it there. So what I've had to do is set it up the proper way, and then click on Make Default. And every time I load a new drum track, what I have to do, because I don't, I don't really want to mess with their preset saved files over here, I need to click on Reset Output Map, and then it will change it back to what my default is. So you'll see if I load up, um, uh, whatever, uh, what is this, Classic Vintage Kit, click Yes because I wanted to replace everything. Okay, now if I click here, you see, like, this should be um, Tom 1 out or something, but it says kit, kick 1, kick 2, plug in output 1 and 2, even though it's supposed to be a different one here. If I click on my reset output maps, it'll change it out back to what I want to do. So to do this from scratch, what we need to do is I'm going to get rid of this. Um, actually, I'm just going to make a new project completely. The first thing that I would suggest doing is not doing insert virtual instrument. The first thing I would suggest doing is just doing a regular new track, naming it SSD host. Go into your effects. You're gonna have to choose the 32 output uh, contact three and press okay. This is the only thing I have is the Steven, Steven Slate uh, here. So um, that's my default, but it, it'll look the same on yours either way. So I'm going to go to a multi and load up one of their kits, and then it would automatically create this for you. Um, so let's load up All-American Kit. And you want to replace uh, multi. Yes. It's going to load everything up. Now as a side note, if um, like I when I first installed this, I didn't do it correctly because I didn't know where to put the samples. And then, of course, I actually read the directions and I put it in the right spot. If you're like me and you forgot to re read the directions, um, on Windows, where you need to put it is in your public Stephen Slate library. And then I had to actually create a folder that said samples and put them in there. So that would actually turn out to be got a computer, library, documents. Um, it's actually in the public documents. Steven Slate Drum EX library, and inside of here, I had to put samples, and then put in these files here. Um, these extra files are in the wrong spot. I'm not going to delete them now, but the they would have been only created in here, not in the other folder as well. Okay, so that would actually be this address here: um, user public documents. Steven Slate Drum EX 
uh, library. Maybe if you have a signature, it might have a different name here. And I had to create the samples folder and then dump in these EX files that I extracted out of the digital download. Uh, so now we have our kit loaded and it will automatically build out these outs, except that you're going to actually have to set up your outs. So what you'll have to do is um, the labels might not be perfect, but after you save it as your default, the next time you load up contact, it'll actually name them properly. So click on this button here, configuration. The first one's fine. It's the kick. Press OK. Next one's the snare. And you want to click here and then change it. Yours will probably say aux1 or and then aux2. That's totally fine. Just It has to be different than kick. So you go to the next one down to press OK. This one, this might pop up saying you need to close out contact. That's fine. We're going we're to do this after we make it a default and restart it. Configure, change this to Tom1, Tom1. Okay. So you continue this down the line. I um, actually have this all done in my other contact video as well. It shows you completely from scratch. Just this is specifically for Steven Slate drums because they map it out for you, which is nice. The other video, I actually have to map it out on my own by doing new tracks and everything because, um, you know, it only gives you two or three outs and then I had to create them all to make 32 out. But anyway, so Tom 3 and so on. So once you're done with everything, I would suggest click Make Default. So after you make it default, when it's all routed properly, anytime you load up a new kit, <clears throat> anytime you load up a new kit, you'll just click on Reset Outputs, and then that will automatically reset it to the default, which is what you created, saving it as default. It's probably the easiest way to get it to always make sure the maps are proper. So now I just loaded that up. You see that these are messed up. It's not the right output. You click on reset output map. Check the same thing again. And now it's set up. Now that we've set all these outputs up and we've made it our default by clicking make default, we need to close out the contact plugin. So click on this up the top left. And we can either do that and click on remove selected effect or you can just click on it and press delete and once it's removed we want to go ahead and add contact in once again 32 channel or 32 outs press ok it'll load it up and now it has these routed sections routed properly with the name on top of them and now what we'll do is we'll load up the drum kit that we would like to use. And once the kit's loaded up, we'll see that these configurations get reverted to just stereo out. I guess that's saved inside of the preset uh, drum kit. But then all we need to do, since we made our, our defaults before, is click on Reset Output Map. It'll give you this message. Um, you don't really have to restart it. That's only to change the names because if you restarted it, you have to do this over again. So after you click Reset Outputs, you'll see your configuration has changed to the proper thing. Now if we right-click on Contact, see that all these have their labels now because they correspond to the channel that they're on. Now if we right-click on this and tell it to Build Multi-Output Routing, it's going to have all of them labeled properly, the, what they correspond to, which is awesome. It's going to have some extras, but we can just get rid of those when, when we're done. So click on Yes to build the multi-outs. Close this out. We'll be able to see everything. Let's get rid of the mixer. Okay. Um, I guess I'll pull in a, um, a beat. So well, I'll just open up the virtual keyboard. It's got to arm our host, change it to our MIDI, all MIDI inputs, arm, monitor. <laughs> so 
So it's definitely in there. So now we're done with that. We can actually get rid of these, the rest of these channels here. Just highlight them all by clicking, holding shift and clicking the last one and press delete. Do you want to delete these? Yes. And um, so now we have all of our sounds in here and uh, I would suggest, because I usually like to put a bus compressor on my drums, um, making a new track and then putting everything, including the SSD host inside of that track and naming it drum mix. So now when you go to program everything uh, or do your new beats or drag in beats or whatever you're going to do, um, you just put them on this line here. So if I were to, to pull up my media browser and pull in a, what is this, a fill here? Um, let's just do a chorus real quick. You put it onto the host because that's the one that's actually triggering all the MIDI. Or if you're going to play with the drum kit, same thing. You would uh, you would record arm this, monitor this when it's the MIDI input, and not the other ones because the other ones are just getting the playback. They don't you don't record anything under them unless you want to process it later. If you want to do all of your um, processing later when you're done, you can always highlight them all, right click and then render tracks to stems and mute originals. So what that'll do is it'll basically make it so you can you can mute your um, contact channel and save some CPU usage. So you click on this here, it'll uh, render each track out for your song individually with whatever instrument is played and mute the originals. Um, and so basically after you program your whole thing, you can do that, and then you can just delete all of your um, original uh, mapped out channels if you would like to. But kind of doesn't really use too much CPU power, and it loads a lot into memory, which is good, so you don't have to worry about pops and clicks in your uh, hard drive. Hopefully um, the 4.0 player for Steven Slate drums will do the same thing, load it into memory. That's it for uh, setting up Steven Slate drums, multi-track outputs into Reaper so you can uh, render them if you would like so that you can actually mix them using different plugins. So as the quick recap, you will have to create your outputs by clicking configure and um, they'll all be sectioned out in this uh, whole entire scroll bar. Um, to make sure you go in sequential stereo pairs. Um, I think the original, when you first get it, is going to say, it'll say stereo out, one, two, and then aux one, one, two, aux two, one, two, aux three, one, two, up to four, and then it'll say unassigned and have a number. Just make sure all your numbers are, are sequential. So, you know, Channel one should be one and two, then three and four, and that goes according to plugin output. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do after we have set everything up the way that we want it to be, we'll uh, select all these channels by just clicking the last one, holding shift, and going all the way up to the drum mix if you did that. And right click on it, save tracks as track template, and then I have this one here is SSD 3.5 multi out. So you can click on that and click save and it will save all your routings. It will save your state inside of here with the proper routings and the current kit. So if you always start out with one of the kits, just choose that one, save that as your um, setup and you won't really have to worry about these routings until you change it. You can save as blank. I'm not sure why you do that. Just save it with the drum kit. Um, set up your outputs and save your uh, track template as that. Make it your defaults inside of contact so that you can just click on reset output map or else you have to redo it every time. That's it for now. Thanks for watching tutorials for Reaper.com. I'm Johnny from Red Sneaker Records.